Are you one of those people who feels guilty about the state of your garden, think it should be maybe a bit tidier, fewer weeds, maybe the grass has gone a bit too long? Worry not. You may actually be doing more good than you think. In a moment, we'll talk about No Mo May. First, though, take a trip to South Devon. It's hoped that a project there will improve the habitat of the coastal path, which might just help around 60 of its most threatened invertebrates and plant species. Our reporter John Ayres can explain. To some people, these plants look like weeds, but in reality, they're a hugely important habitat for the insects and animals that live here. So what's this project all about? Well, at its core, it's about creating and restoring and enhancing species-rich coastal grasslands like this for rare and endangered insects that the South Devon coastline is their stronghold in the country. And then involving lots of people, communities, landowners, farmers, in helping us achieve that vision. We need more meadows that have got lots of different wildflowers in them because these insects all need different things. And actually, somewhere like this is perfect. It looks beautiful for all the colours, but it's got those different heights and types of flowers that they need. And then we need to join them up. So what we want to do is create these corridors. If we only have little patches of wildflower meadows, these insects haven't got anywhere to go. We need to join them up to make corridors so they can really get a good hold on South Devon by moving along the coast. There's place for them to go along these corridors. They can go up and down the estuaries. This looks amazing to us, but some people think, oh, it's just a load of weeds. So the education and awareness part of it's really important too, to actually say to people, your lawn might look beautiful and green and pristine, but has it actually got many flowers in it? What is there for the insects to feed on? In this part of the world, it's gonna be along the coast paths. Is there a, a conflict here between people that are going to be using the paths and what you're trying to achieve? No, not at all. I mean, the coast path is an amazing way for people to get out and actually see these places. I guess what we need to do is look at how we work with the farmers who are managing that land alongside the coast path. So we'll be providing advice, specialist advice, that will actually help them get into schemes that will help them get paid for doing this really important nature conservation work as part of their farming business. The project lasts for five years and it's hoped it will help address the biodiversity crisis along this part of South Devon. John Ayres, BBC News. So in the studio with us this morning, Tim Cockrell, who's an entomologist. Morning to you, Good morning. Tim. That thing, the question we asked at the top about, you know, people look at their gardens and think, are we doing the right thing? Does it look, does it look nice? Are we doing the right thing for what might want to live and breathe there? What's the answer to that? Yeah, so, so we, the sad thing is that we come from one of the most nature-depleted countries in the world. So we've lost more of our wildlife compared to most of the countries around the world. But we have this secret weapon in gardens. And in fact, if you add up all of the area of the gardens in the UK, uh, they come to a larger area than all of our national nature reserves, right? So our gardens, you can see it as a bit of a secret weapon for biodiversity and, and nature. And there are really interesting things and tiny things that we can do just to make our gardens more friendly towards biodiversity. Like, for example, not, not mowing your lawn quite as often. So no mow may. No mow may, yeah, it's a brilliant scheme. And so if you think about all of those seasons where the plants are growing, where the plants are flowering all the way through spring and summer, if you, and we're not talking about turning gardens into jungles, you know. People like to keep a nice, tidy garden, a garden that you can actually use. But if you choose some patches in your garden, for example, just to let them go wild and let them, let them run wild, let the wildflowers come up for a few months and then mow a nice, tight path through the middle, you have a, the kind of mosaic of different habitats within a garden and they're great for wildlife. Do you know, um, <clears throat> when we come to the office here, come, come off the road and there's quite a, there are quite a few main roads around the outskirts of Manchester, ring roads and stuff, one of the verges has like thistles and wildflowers and it's only just come up in the last kind of few months. Mm. And I, I noticed it and I just thought, what a good idea. Yeah. You know, we can adapt, can't we? Even the most busy roads Completely. with the most beautiful flowers. Yeah, and it's amazing what pops up. So uh, a university that I used to work at, we had a, a very tightly cropped lawn outside the front. It was very nice and prim and proper, and it had been like that for decades and decades. And one year, we just decided to leave it. So we did exactly that. We just uh, mowed some nice tight paths through the middle and left these other patches to go wild. And we found orchids. There were three or four different species of orchid. And so they'd been waiting to pop up, and all we needed to do, not, no kind of intensive management, just give them a chance. So these things are there and they're just waiting for us to give them a chance to come back. Do you know back. what I'm thinking? There'll be people watching this morning and thinking, it's all very well you're talking about mowing and mowing a nice line and leaving space or whatever. We haven't got a lawn. All we've got is, you know, maybe we've just got a balcony. Or, yep. You know, some people don't even have that. Or, or a bit of patio, which yep. is all concreted over, maybe before your time. 
If you and that's your circumstance, are you just out of the game entirely in terms of you know what you can do? Not at all. There are always small things that you can do. And so we think about encouraging wildlife. I, I'm an entomologist, and so we're always talking about insects, one of the most important parts of biodiversity in, in any kind of habitat. And of course, lots of insects are pollinators. They feed on nectar from flowers. So anything you can do to have some flowers. The, the best thing you can do is to think about the, the diversity of flowers. So things that flower throughout the year or at different times of year. If you think about different sizes and shapes of flowers, different colours, well then a diversity of flowers, even in containers, in pots, even on a windowsill. Diversity of flowers means that a diversity of insects will come and then that has knock-on effects for the whole of the rest of the ecosystem. When you introduce yourself, I think you have a, there's a better way you could introduce yourself rather than, and, and I always get the <laughs> entomologist. <laughs> Bug Wrangler. Yeah. Bug Wrangler That's is a it. very, very cool name. What does that involve? Bug Wrangler to the stars. So as well as so I teach at Falmouth University, we teach about wildlife photography and wildlife filmmaking. And the other thing that I do is I help TV programmes when they're filming stories about insects. They're kind of David Attenborough wildlife documentaries. And so I've been helping out. I did some things with Springwatch this year where we found some very exciting things in gardens, actually, some amazing biodiversity there. Such I think as, we can yeah. see. Yeah, I think yeah. maybe we've got a clip. This is about... A garden in Wales, is it? That's right. So yeah. I was working with a, an amazing filmmaker, amazing young filmmaker, Jake Morris, and in his garden in Wales, we discovered this tiny animal. It's called a pseudoscorpion. So it's from a, a group of arachnids related to spiders and scorpions, and it lives in the compost heaps in our garden. So, so the way pseudo. we're looking at it there, pseudoscorpion, because yeah. of the filming, it looks gigantic. <laughs> yeah. you, how big is it? It's about three millimetres long, yeah, so we oh, use very special really lenses. Tiny. Really, really so it's tiny. it's the size thing. of, like, a small fingernail. Uh, exactly that, yeah, yeah. Really really, really small animal and it's got this in incredible trick up its sleeve that it, it grabs onto a fly's leg and it hitches a right so the fl when the fly's flying around it uses the fly as a kind of taxi to take it, it to a different small habitat. That it can hitch your Absolutely. eyes on a fly. Yeah. And we had to film that. We had to make all of that happen right in front of the macro lens. But those things only existed because we found a compost heap in Jake's garden so it's another way you know just having that diversity of habitat. Some tightly mown patches of grass, some nice kind of mini meadows almost, some shrubs, a compost heap, maybe a little pond if you combine all of those things together, then you start to see these things that you would normally expect to see in a tropical rainforest, like a pseudoscorpion, things most people have never heard of before. What's your garden like? It's, oh, it's a mess. <laughs> no, it's, but you're well, proud I, of it. I, absolutely. No, I try to do that. I try to do, do just enough to keep it tidy. Um, we've got a, a small garden, but the, the biodiversity I see there is absolutely astonishing. Uh, it, um, I hope they're not watching, but next door have got uh, that plastic grass in their garden. And I must say they've turned it into a biodiversity desert. And just by letting things grow a little bit wild, we, we see... Yeah, they, I'm going to get have in trouble when I get back home now. Have so. you just outed your neighbours <laughs> yeah. on national television? Uh, can, can we just try and <laughs> put a positive that. on that? Presumably Presumably, people do, for whatever reason, want false grass, don't yeah. they? Presumably, you could do things around that. Absolutely. That, you know, so it's not, you're not uh, a big... And, and they hooligan. really do. So, so they've got, they've got that, that... So it doesn't get kind of muddy in our yeah, Cornish, true, in our Cornish yeah. winters, but they've got lots of great containers with flowers. So, yeah, they are doing great things. Yeah, you're so, you're so going to so need to take myself, tea round or, <laughs> or a sandwich or something. Cake. Cake. Tim, it's been lovely. Bug wrangler. It's been lovely talking <laughs> to you. Tim Cockrell, thank you very much.